uh, George, part two of the session is on graphite. Um, again, we spoke on this around six months ago. Similarly to lithium, give us give us a bit of an update as to what's been going on in this market uh, since, since we last spoke. Sure, of course. Uh, the graphite market has performed well since, since Q4 2021, uh, with prices for battery appropriate flake graphite fines increasing by about 30% over the past six months. I think demand has been strong and the price has been steadily improving, which is good for producers trying to ramp up production. Um, unfortunately, kind of shipping issues stemming from COVID have continued to be an issue for the graphite market, but we've seen some marginal relief there and, and should continue to see that situation improve out until the end of the year. Okay. Uh, other than the shipping issues, are, are there any other drivers around this increase in the price? And other than just the fines, how have the, uh, the jumbo and, and the large flakes been been, uh, been performing. Yeah, the Jumbo and Large Flakes have been doing well. I think um, kind of the main driver of price increases though in the graphite market has really been this strong demand from the anode value chain, which is focused on the fines. Um, there has also been some good industrial demand outside of China, which has been improving prices for larger mesh sizes as well. Um, and then on the supply side of the equation, there have been kind of typical seasonal mine closures in, in northern Chinese provinces as well as some environmental inspections there, which have kind of cast some doubt on when that supply might return this year, uh, which has placed upward pressure on, on all prices. I think also just to delve deeper into the shipping issues there, um, on a CIF basis, that is, you know, when the costs of insurance and freight are included in delivery, um, prices have been driven upwards due to logistical problems as an overhang of COVID-19. And this affects graphite adversely relative to other critical minerals because graphite has an absolute kind of lower price per ton. Um, and this means in some cases, the cost to purchase graphite has been doubled as a result of high container freight pricing. What about your forecast moving forward? Have, have they updated at all since we last spoke, given everything that's been going on in the world recently? Yeah, I, I think we've definitely seen more investment flowing through to juniors developing assets in the sector and moves from some to bring on projects online in, in the kind of near to mid term. Yet price increases haven't really made a drastic impact on our forecast of market balance, but with no real acceleration of development timelines at the moment. What about any new producers coming online over the last 12 months? So have we seen any new entrants to the market? And, and if so, where, where have they come from? Which jurisdiction? And, and how have they been performing, if, if so? Yeah, I mean, in short, we really, we really haven't seen any new producers um, in, the, in the past 12 months. I think there are a couple of potentials for later this year and early next. But we're not quite seeing funding flow through as easily as it could to graphite producers, uh, kind of due to the limited market price response compared to other more popular critical technology metals. Um, that said, we've seen more supply come online from existing operations over the past year, from both Chinese miners in northern provinces and also zero resources. Um, and, and this has kind of worked to marginally reduce the forthcoming shortage, but, but not eliminate it in the graphite market. So we'll have to keep an eye on how production at these operations progress this year and, and also potentially for new operations late this year or early next. Okay, obviously with everything that's going on um, at the moment, what's the breakdown on the impact that we could be seeing from disrupt, supply disruptions in Russia, if any? Yeah, so I think there are two mines here that are mainly going to be impacted. And the total production of those amounts to about 30,000 tonnes per year of flake graphite. Uh, in, in a nearly million tonne market, um, that's not going to massively affect the supply demand balance, but, but what it is going to have an impact on is, is local supply within Europe, um, which, which is definitely a shame um, for, for kind of local supply availability of flake graphite for especially industrial consumers in Europe. And with oil moving up to, well, way above $100 a barrel, obviously synthetic graphite is usually uh, used as a well, process from, from crude oil. Does that have any impact whatsoever on the price of synthetic graphite? I know it's fairly expensive already. Uh, is, is that likely to increase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, synthetic graphite, uh, you know, feedstock coke material is a, is a byproduct of the oil refining process. So oil price fluctuations, they don't have too much of a direct impact on synthetic graphite anode prices, but there will be an indirect impact um, since it will be more costly to operate oil refineries when prices are high. And also domestic Chinese oil prices will be kind of likely driven upwards by international prices as well, as China imports 60 to 70% of its oil feedstock. 
I think whilst rising anode demand will remain the kind of main driver of synthetic graphite uh, feedstock prices rising, um, rising international oil prices and also recent COVID shutdowns in China may contribute to the price rise as well. And I, I recommend anyone who's more interested in the synthetic graphite market to, to get in touch with us regarding our synthetic graphite price assessment, which we've recently begun publishing. Perfect. That's a fairly new one, is it? The, the new, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, come check it out. Good. Um, just stick to synthetics just very briefly. Um, can you remind everyone what the breakdown is from synthetics and natural fake? And I think last time we spoke, you were mentioning that we're starting to see, especially battery manufacturing in China, start to do a blend approach. Is that is that still still the theme moving forward? That, that's still really, really the zeitgeist for kind of the best balance of, of cost and performance benefits in the anode market. And, and that's the real way we see the market moving towards. At the moment, um, anode producers in China tend to favor synthetic slightly, and anode producers outside of China tend to favor natural graphite dominant anodes. Uh, but we definitely think uh, that that will kind of move to a, a blend more consistently through time. Okay. And um, just thinking about the price moving forward from jumbo all the way down to the fines. Um, what's the forecast at the moment looking like in terms of over the next five, 10 years? I know we're, I think it was around 2025, you guys were forecasting a, a pretty big hike in, um, in, in, a, in a supply deficit there. Yeah, I, I think we definitely see price improvement in the midterm. And this is really on the back of incredibly strong demand forecast from, from the growing anode value chain, um, definitely within China and outside. And primarily, this will drive price improvements in the finer mesh sizes, uh, minus 100 mesh, for instance, which kind of has the most appropriate morphology and is the cheapest at the moment for, for anode production. Uh, as demand scales for, for this particular product, we may then see the larger mesh flake graphite mill down to meet these requirements, um, especially if we enter a supply deficit in the market balance for finer flake material, which along with competition between industrial and battery value chain customers, uh, should see upward price pressure for plus 100 mesh material as well, uh, and even plus 80 mesh size material also. Uh, given more uh, supply being brought online to cater to the battery industry in these finer flake sizes, however, um, we could see prices for jumbo and super jumbo flake fall in the longer term. I think the end markets for these products are quite small, uh, and a new wave of graphite mines to suit the battery value chain could see an oversupply develop in these markets towards the end of the decade. So what it sounds like is that the, the jumbo uh, and the large flake, uh, where obviously they're, they're situated uh, a lot higher in price at the moment, are, are sort of going to tighten a bit closer to the fines. Um, and this, I assume, is, is leading to what you were saying there in terms of the milling process being used to uh, reduce the jumbo and large flake down to fines. What price are we going to need to see realistically or, or how tight is this market going to be to make that justifiable not to then try and make the profit off the jumbo and large plates? I think a good basket price to incentivize uh, new production and expansion in, in the graphite industry it is around $1,200 per ton across all of these grades. Um, but I definitely agree with what you mentioned earlier about the prices of fines coming up towards that value and the price of jumbo in the longer term. Um, dipping down towards that value um, as a result of, of kind of the structural deficits in, in those finance markets. Perfect. All right. Um, well, that's, a, again, another really good update, George, and I appreciate you coming back on to, to, uh, to share it. Mm -hmm. No problem at all. Thanks, Peter.